Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Kristen's Kitchen. How good does that feel? That just feels right to say. It's been way, way, way too long. Today we are back. We're back. Kristen's Kitchen is back. No more waiting. It's back. This is my favorite type of video to film for YouTube and it's been so long with the move, having a baby, moving houses again. We're still not even in our actual house, but I finally feel like I'm in a kitchen where I can film. Today, we're gonna be making a very happy, springy, summery cake because I don't know, this year I've been very into making cake, like for friends' birthdays or baby showers, things like that. I just think it's really special to be able to make someone a homemade cake. It's kind of similar to bread, where it's like you know a lot of love and time is poured into it, so it just feels like extra special to be able to give it to somebody. Today we're making a cake that I have always wanted to make. I'm sure you guys have seen these cakes. They're like the really summery strawberry three layer cakes with like that fluffy looking cream in the middle and it has strawberries on top and flowers on top. I'm sure you've seen these all over. If not, I've been seeing them for so long and I've always been like, I gotta make that one day. Today, we are gonna be making a recipe that's kind of like a combination of a few different recipes that I found, plus I'm adding in a few things that I just think will make it really, really good. I'll have the recipes that I took inspiration from below and then I'll have everything written out that I'm doing for this cake down below in case you guys wanna make it too, of course. For the base of the cake, it's actually a lemon olive oil cake because I just thought that that would be so good with strawberries and strawberry filling and just, it all feels very fresh and summery. I just spit. I have everything written down that we need today. I think I've mentioned this before, but I feel like when you're doing kind of a more intensive recipe, it's kind of annoying to be going on your phone and scrolling and looking to see how much of this and that to add this. And so I always just have it written down in a notebook and I find that to be a lot, a lot easier. So we have all of our ingredients right here laid out and I'm gonna prepare my little baking pans. They always say to do this first and I used to procrastinate preparing my baking pans because it is kind of an annoying part about baking cakes is like cutting out the parchment paper and buttering the pans. But really, if you do it first, it's so much nicer because then once you're actually done baking the batter, you don't have to worry about, you know, fiddling with everything. So just get the most annoying part out of the way first. So what I do is I take my parchment paper, so I have three pieces of parchment paper, and I fold it like this. I'm sure you guys have seen this trick before. I just fold it up really tiny, and then I can kind of measure from my baking pan how much I need to cut off to make a perfect circle. So I usually go like that to see how much I need to cut out. So about like right here and pray that it works. It's always fun to see, did I succeed or not? So here's your little circle. Let's see if it fits. I always make it too big, it, but it's better to make it too big than too small. I'm gonna cut out about that much more. Also, I need to get used to explaining baking things again because it's been so long and um, I feel a little bit rusty. It's like when I don't vlog for a long time, I feel like Oh, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do. But I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get back into the hang of it. Don't you worry. Okay, so now I'm gonna butter these really, really well. And you might be thinking to yourself, Kristen, we don't need to see the details of preparing the cake pans. That's so boring. But I will say, one thing that I think can make or break the success of a layered cake, especially is the pan preparation because if the cake sticks to the sides of your pans or you can't get it out or you don't have parchment paper down and half the cake splits apart because it's stuck to the bottom of the pan, trust me, you really wanna have a well-prepared baking pan. So this is all buttered and then I'll just lay down one of those pieces of parchment paper right here and then you're ready to go. 
Pans are officially prepared. Now let's begin on the fun part, which is the cake batter. Okay, so first we're gonna be adding two eggs into our mixer bowl. And now we're gonna add in the sugar. Okay, we are gonna mix this for five to seven minutes. So if you have a stand mixer, this is where you whip that puppy out. But my stand mixer is still in storage, so I'm gonna be using this lovely little hand mixer right here. And you're gonna beat this until it's just super light and fluffy. Here is the consistency that it is after five minutes. Okay, now in this large bowl, we're going to add two cups of flour. Oh, ding. Oh, oh my gosh. Two cups of all-purpose flour. One, two. We're also gonna be doing a teaspoon of baking powder. Teaspoon of salt. I only have the pink Himalayan salt right now, so hopefully that will be okay. Um, I have been watching a little bit of the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. Have you guys been watching that? It, you know what freaks me out? What freaks me out is I understand everybody's on Johnny Depp's side, which you know I'm kind of on his side too because she seems scary, but it's like, what if she is telling the truth and then no one is giving her like a fair shot? You know what I'm saying? Because I think it's obvious that they were both not so great. Sometimes when y'all are seeing that kind of stuff that like you're seeing like an insight into someone's personal life that they never like wanted people to see, don't you feel kind of cringe watching it? Like sometimes when they're playing like a voice message or something like that, like an audio recording of one of their fights, I feel kind of guilty like I'm listening into something that I am not supposed to be listening to. And it gives me like that cringe feeling in my stomach. I don't know. Are you guys like that? I've been feeling, I've been feeling ooch about the whole situation. Just a little bit like, ugh. Our dry mix is all mixed together. Now I think we're gonna do like the olive oil lemon section of the recipe. We're gonna get this separate bowl. It's just like a little bit smaller. And we're gonna be putting in two thirds cup of olive oil. Now I'm going to be washing some of these lemons because we're going to be zesting them. So I'm going to wash these, zest them, and be right back. So I did the zest of about three lemons and now we're going to squeeze, I think it's half of a cup, yeah half of a cup of lemon juice. Oh perfect. Half of a cup was two and a half lemons. Add this right into our olive oil and zest. The last two things we're adding in is half of a cup of buttermilk and then we're doing a little bit of vanilla. You guys know how I feel about my vanilla bean paste from Trader Joe's. You can only get it like during Christmas time so I stock up because you can get vanilla bean <laughs> because you can get vanilla bean paste anywhere but I feel like it's so expensive in Trader Joe's. These are like $3 and they taste so good and I'm just very passionate about my Trader Joe's vanilla bean paste. Now we're back over here where we have our butter and sugar mixture and we are gonna alternate uh, wet and dry ingredients into here. My dilemma. My dilemma is that I think I have eight inch cake pans and this recipe is for three six inch cake pans. So what I'm gonna do, I'm really <laughs> deciding this on a uh, very whim. I think I'm just gonna bake two of the cakes and then I might cut them in half and then it'll be a four layer cake or I might just leave it as a two layer cake because I definitely don't have enough batter to do three cake pans. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta improvise. Okay, I'm gonna pop these babies in the oven. 350 for, I think it said 20 minutes, but I'm gonna keep an eye out because the worst thing is to have overbaked cakes. So, 
I will be back when they're done. They just got out of the oven. Here are the cakes. It took about, I would say, 13 minutes for them to bake. Um, I'm going to flip them over onto this cooling rack. <gasps> this is always a nerve-wracking part. <gasps> Baked perfectly. So, I think these cakes are too thin to cut in half. And will it look silly if it's just a two-layer cake? Have I ever seen a two-layer cake? Now I'm like insecure about how this is gonna look. Cause it's not gonna be very tall. You know what I'm saying? I think it'll be okay. Do you guys think it'll be okay? I'm gonna let these cool <laughs> while we uh, think about what we're gonna do. Let's make our icing. Let's make our frosting because I think that's gonna be a very big fun part of this whole thing. So I'm gonna make a strawberry fluffy whipped cream cheese frosting. Would it be fun to make some like strawberry puree and put it into the whippedness? And then it'll be like pink and it'll have like specks of strawberries in it. I think that that would be really cute. So I am going to look up how to make strawberry puree and I think that's going to be our next step. Okay, I just looked up how to make strawberry puree. It's pretty simple. You need, for this recipe, 20 ounces of strawberries. So we have that right here. And then you're basically going to just cut them up and cook them slowly over heat with some sugar and what else? Some lemon zest if you want but that's optional so we're basically just breaking down the strawberries with some sugar so it'll be pretty easy here is what this looks like so it's a third a cup of sugar your strawberries and then I did a little bit of lemon juice so we're just gonna cook this until it's all bubbly and you know cooked and pureed looking okay here we are with the strawberry puree. I'm gonna let it cook for a couple more minutes. As I was stirring the puree, pondering what this cake is gonna look like with it just being these two tiny layers, I think I decided I'm gonna be making two more layers. So basically, I'm gonna just do what I just did all over again because I just feel like it's not gonna look cute. That doesn't give me the effect that I'm looking for. And I don't wanna go through all the work of making a cake and then it not even being what I wanted. And for those of you that are making it out there, just make sure you have a six inch cake pans and then you'll be perfect. You'll have a perfect, cute little three layered cake. But for me, this is where I'm at. I just realized something while I'm baking this next batch of layers. I forgot the baking soda. I forgot the baking soda. That is why these layers didn't rise very much, I think. I mean, I think that they are obviously less tall because they're eight inch layers, but I forgot the baking soda. Oh my gosh. On these next two layers, I'm gonna have the baking soda and baking powder, so we'll see what a difference it makes. I'm still gonna use all the layers in the end, but kind of funny, kind of funny. Okay, cake layers, round two. Just finished making the batter again. It did go by way faster this time because I wasn't filming and that made it go by really fast. But I'm so curious to see if these layers are way fluffier because there is baking soda these are going into the oven and then then we can move on i feel like i've been baking these cakes for 17 hours while those layers bake i am going to blend this strawberry puree hopefully i don't make a huge mess oh kind of making a mess but not too bad here's what our strawberry puree looks like this was so easy to make we're just gonna blend this up here is the strawberry puree. Let's give it a taste. This is so good. I just finished 
all of the dishes. You can only imagine the amount of dishes I just had to do with making a cake two different times. Let's check on these cakes and let's get started on the icing. I think we just need two cartons of heavy cream. We also have our cream cheese and then we're gonna put in our strawberry puree and it's a super simple whipped icing situation. So let's get started. We have eight ounces of cream cheese in our bowl and we're just gonna take our little mixer and mix this until it's a little bit more whipped. And now we're adding two cups of heavy cream. I think we're gonna have just enough. Yeah, this is one cup. I don't even know why I'm measuring this one because I know it's exactly one cup. I'm gonna whip this until stiff peaks form. Now we are gonna add in our, oh, one second, strawberry puree, which I'm very excited about. So I'm gonna mix that up. Again, I am doing this. It's not part of the recipe, so I am hoping this doesn't mess anything up. So beautiful, oh my gosh. My angle, my angle wasn't even right. Calls for a fourth of a cup of powdered sugar, so I'm gonna add that. Here is what our whipped topping icing looks like. It looks so good and it tastes so good. And it's the perfect pink color that I was imagining. Now let's take the new layers out and see how much puffier they are. <gasps> they are. So here are the ones with no baking soda and here are the ones with the baking soda. So you can see they're definitely fluffier with the baking soda and they look like a better texture as well. But I think when we, you know, layer the cakes, we can stagger the bad textured ones. While the other two are fully cooling, I'm gonna run to the store and see if I can find some chamomile flowers because my real dream was to have strawberries and chamomile on top of this cake and I don't have any. So let's run to the store really quick, see if we can find some. If not, maybe we can just get some other flowers to put on top. This is my ride to go get flowers. Ooh, that's pretty good. The flower shop did not have any chamomile flowers, but I just called Trader Joe's and they said that they have some, so we're gonna run to Trader Joe's because it's not that far away. Oh my gosh, I think we literally got the last bunch. Mm. That... Wait, those grow in our yard, babe. No, they don't. Because they're like weeds. No. Wow, we got the last ones. I'm gonna get some parrot tulips too, for fun. We're home and we got the flowers, but something horrific has happened. Camper eats my baked goods every single time. I'll spend an entire day making a sourdough loaf. He decides to eat it. I spent probably an extra hour and a half making, um, y'all saw, for me to be standing right there and he jumps up and eats half of it. Did you see him in action or? I saw him in action. <laughs> Do I make this a four layer cake or? No, you obviously make it a three layer cake. That's disgusting. Don't, you're not gonna have a half eaten layer dog cake. <laughs> okay, you know what? This cake is still gonna be good and it's gonna be three layers like how we initially thought. So we're back to square one, not square one. We're back to, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. We're gonna start by putting a little bit of our frosting on our um, cake plate and I'm gonna be doing the layers, no baking soda layer 
baking soda layer, no baking soda layer. Now we're gonna do a good dollop. Oh my gosh, this fluffy, fluffy cream looks so good. And I think I want it to be a naked cake on the outside, so I don't want to cover the outside like this part. I just want you to be able to see that cream thick layer. Should I put fresh sliced strawberries in between the layers? I feel like that would be really good. You know, I think I am. I think I am gonna do the, the cut strawberries. Here's what it's looking like. Cute. I'm also doing a little time lapse over here. Next layer is gonna be our baking soda layer. It's always satisfying to pull off the parchment paper. So I guess this is what it was gonna look like if we hadn't have made the other two layers, but it's looking really cute. Okay. Last layer to go. So nice. Okay. I love what Half Baked Harvest did with her strawberry cake. She kind of just like piled a bunch of strawberries on top and I love how it looks. So let's just try that. I'm a little nervous because who knows what it's gonna turn out like, but we're just gonna see how it goes. This is tricky, but we're just playing around with it. We have the muchly sought after chamomile. Oh, this the chamomile is just gonna make it. I'm so excited. This was very worth the search. Cause it just strawberries and chamomile there's just nothing cuter. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be really cute. Here she is. <laughs> Look who is back and ready to eat some cake. Just kidding. You can't have any cake, James, but you can look at it. Look at the cake mom made. <laughs> he loves the camera. He's never been so excited about her. <gasps> okay, James. Look. Do you like the cake mom made? Do you like the cake? Blue. Can you say mama? Can you say cake? Cece's making herself a cup of coffee. That's what you hear in the background. Bless you. Hey. Do you want to taste a strawberry? Yummy. I don't even know how you go about cutting something like this. I wish that it, this was for someone's birthday or something because it's so pretty. This is the official reveal. Oh, that looks actually so good. Here it is, so cute. The texture of the cake, oh wow. <laughs> I would definitely recommend not forgetting the baking soda because I can already tell the layers with no baking soda are way more dense and this is like really light and fluffy. Let's get a fork. Oh. Well, how is it? Don't eat a flower. Flowers aren't good. <laughs> <laughs> this cake has had problems. Um, it is so moist. Really good. Mm. Mm. Really moist. It's amazing. All right, Marcus always has to taste the Kristen's Kitchen recipe. Mm. Mm. Get the flowers out. Get the flowers out. Trust me, you don't want a flower. Oh, wow. Oh, that was such a good bite. I'm so proud of you. Lemony, strawberry, whippy. It's called lemony schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> oh, lemony schnick. You love it? Mmm, that's delicious. I'm gonna taste the no baking soda layer. Honestly? 
the no baking soda layer it's like very moist and dense so i know it's not really how cake is supposed to be but oh my gosh it's so good it's so lemony but i love the really light whipped cream icing on top and i think that you guys need to make this because it is so good i think chamomile is technically edible but would not recommend eating one of those flowers wow like what it's so cute like look how cute this is I love it so much like I never want it to be gone because it's like a cute decoration in your house I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode back to Kristen's kitchen. I missed you guys. It's been way too long and this was such a fun recipe to come back with. And if you guys wanna see more Kristen's kitchen episodes, make sure to comment down below, give this video a thumbs up. Maybe you guys can leave some recommendations for things that you'd like to see me make. I know a lot of you were wanting my full sourdough recipe, so I feel like that would also be a good Kristen's kitchen episode. But don't forget to subscribe if you are not already. And I love you guys so much. And I will see you very soon. Bye.